Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. John here on a blustery day. It's, it's okay though here in Lincolnshire. I've got dad here. Hello. <laughs> this video is uh, an extended chat about the Rustival show. I'm calling it Rustival Roundup. Sounds it's like all right, a good idea. <laughs> if you're not aware, the Rustival was an event held at the British Motor Museum in Gaydon. Uh, Warwickshire. Warwickshire, that's right. On Saturday, the 9th of March 2024. And I suppose you can only describe it as if it has wheels and you can drive it there, it's welcome. Yep, definitely. Um, it was hosted by the YouTube stars. The, the, well, the big, the big league of the YouTube peoples, really. The, the, you know, I don't know what the word to describe is it. Stars. Stars, yeah. What's the word when everybody Personality. knows of them? I don't want to use the word influencer. I don't like No, that. no, no. But <laughs> there's some people who are on the telly and everybody knows who they are. What's Personality. the Personality. No, it's somebody like... Everybody knows them from your mum to your little brother. Celebrity. No, there's a better word than that, isn't there? <laughs> it's, it's... I can't think of the word. It's like known around all homes. There must be a phrase for it. <laughs> I don't know what this phrase is that it you're is. hankering There's after. There's a phrase for it, isn't it? Everybody knows who they are. Anyway, it was held like by... Like Peter Levy. Yeah, like Peter Levy. Uh, it was held by the YouTube stars uh, Hubnut, uh, so Ian and his partner Carly, so Miss Hubnut. Has she been learning to drive or something? Yeah, I think she's just passed her test. I thought she'd got, they'd got her a car. Yeah, uh, Daihatsu Sherard. Uh, so Ian and his partner... Uh, were, were part of the organisation team. My friend Steph from iDriver Classic, Steph Hoy, um, and Matt from Furious Driving, who actually I, I've never, I have met him a couple of times, but not got as much. He's heard of you. <laughs> he has heard of me due to Rover 75 drama, which we'll cover in this he video. He mentioned you in his latest video. There's lots of people who have got Rustaval videos out yeah. on the channel already. And Some wonderful ones. I filmed a lot of content from the Rustaval. And everybody else has filmed a lot of content. Yeah, and so this is why I wanted to do something a little bit different, which was um, a little bit of a chat with you, chat with me. Um, and chat with you. And a chat with you guys as well, because we've learnt a lot from our Rustaval experience, and we'll come on to that in just a minute. I just want to thank as well Matt Pink, who uh, is a behind-the-scenes celebrity, so to Is speak. Is he the chap you were speaking to just before we left? Yeah, so he has a Yugo. Uh, Matt and his team, he runs a um, team of event organisers, sort of came together with Ian, with Carly, with Steph, with Matt to put the show on. So I want to thank him as well because he is a, a not-in-the-limelight creator of the Rustival. So I wanted to thank Matt as well. Nice That's guy. That's his daytime job, is it? Yeah, I believe he runs an events company and, right. and, and, and deals with that. He's an ideal thing. man to sort of show them what to do. Absolutely. Yeah. And the event was obviously held at Gaydon, which was the British Motor Museum. Now, I'd never been there before. You'd never been there before. No. And it was a fantastic day out. If you've been following the series on the channel, our plan was to take the Rover 75. And before we get into the nitty gritty of the show and what I loved and what you loved and how good it was. Tell us about the Rover 75 because we got there. I Spoiler. think I've been to Gaiden in a Rover 75 before though. Oh well there you go. Not the first time then. Yeah. <laughs> but not to the Motor Museum. Where to? To the Jaguar Land Rover? No, to the Rover Training School. Oh of course, of course. We will talk about the event in a minute and the location. But if you haven't seen the video on the channel of us heading to Mablethorpe, well, the Rover 75 is fixed. Yeah. We've done it, we've fixed it, we've changed pretty much everything, and actually, if anything, it's overcooling now. Um, were you happy with the journey there? We didn't film the journey there in the Rover 75, mainly because... Car was brilliant, driver... <laughs> mm. I'm a bad passenger. You are a bad passenger, and also maybe I have some bad habits as a driver. I'm a bad passenger, I uh, must I'm, admit. I'm not saying that I, I'm you know, careless and inconsiderate, but no. maybe I don't drive uh, 50 miles an hour everywhere like, like you might want me to. Um, so we took it to Mablethorpe. The Mablethorpe run was good. 
again, if anything, over cooling. And we had an issue at Alford where the temperature needle dropped and we thought, hang on a minute. But if you haven't seen that video, all was good. We set off, and again, we haven't filmed that journey to the Rustaville because not only was it pitch black, we set off here at about five o'clock in the morning. Um, but also I have a limited amount of storage on my camera and limited amount of battery power and I didn't want to deplete it all on the way there. It was a, how long was the journey? About an hour and a half? I don't know, it seemed longer coming home. It, it was. I was bored by the time we got to Bingham Roundabout on the way home. So we left here at half five and we got there at eight o'clock in the morning. And we did go some wibbly wobbly back roads and I'm sure you'll tell us all about how we got it filthy in a moment but it drove really well pleased, <laughs> as i spent the day before cleaning it because you was too busy at work yeah so i spent the entire week up to the rustival fest at work so i i was on i was i was out for the count being unable to do anything on the rover 75 there were things that you did such as the re repair the head gasket mm. and put the new head gasket on clean all the valves up and do the engine bay yeah and then you cleaned it for me. Yeah, I think I, as far as I can say, our deal is that you do the cleaning and I do the mechanic. It is that is that is that. Oh, is we shared it, didn't we? You put four plugs in, and I did yep. all the mechanic in, and I cleaned else. it. But I also put some spark plugs in that you then took out and put again. Yeah, well, I say you put some plugs in. <laughs> so I think the share of labour is not over good, really. Ordinarily, I would be cleaning the car, and there's a video again on the channel where I've started to clean the interior and detail it. It's nowhere near up to scratch, the paintwork is, is flat. Mm. Um, and there's a dent in the bonnet, and all sorts of stuff that I wanted to get done before Rustaville. And you don't clean engine bays, do you? Well, his, his theory is, if I don't open the bonnet, nobody's going to look at it. Let's open the bonnet and have a look. Because um, you took some, some time. This is the most important part. To clean the engine bay. This is where the stuff is that makes it go. I'll just show the good people. Did, 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 and it's still looking good. Yeah. That's so, what I like to see. <laughs> that's what I like to see, a non-blown head gasket. No clean engine. Um, anyway, so, the journey there how did you feel it went, apart from the driving, apart from getting it mucky, the actual performance of the car? So, it's good. Mm. Good. Again, overcooling. No, don't worry about that. So, it got, I am worried about it, and you're telling me not to worry about it. And a few people in the comments have pointed it out that the car got up to temperature and dropped a little bit when we got onto the A47 and we were on the motorway at 70 miles an hour. Is that genuinely something I should worry about? No. So Especially with a Rover 75. <laughs> if it was an Ilman Minx from 1970, you'd have a bit of cardboard in front of the radiator <laughs> in the winter. <laughs> Just to stop it from overcooling. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. So we got there. We got to the Rustaville. And we arrived and we were placed in our own little area. And one thing I want to say about the Rustaville, if you didn't attend, it was easy getting in. Oh, yeah. The team at the British Motor Museum were on it, scanning your tickets, looking at who you are and getting you in. The we marshals had been told what to do. We have been to car shows not that long ago that will remain nameless, where half the exhibits are either overheating, yeah. <laughs> getting in, or it's just pandemonium. So I would like to recognise the team there as well for getting people in. It's well organised. Um, I think somebody in the comments on the forum said that they had to wait for four cars at one point, and that was the queue. <laughs> <laughs> right. So the organisation on getting people in was fantastic. Yeah. We were obviously put in our own special area. Yeah, uh, nice that was. With uh, a special sign that said, John Cooton Cars. In fact, I'll get it, so you can see it. Talk amongst yourselves. We were backed over a drain though, so any coolant could be Harvested and say recycled. <laughs> da, da, da. Exhibit A. Uh, this is oh, it's, it's windy. This is what we were given uh, to place in our windscreen from the team at Rustaville. Um, John Keaton Cars. Obviously, that's my logo. Um, meet the YouTuber and the and the um, logo of the Rustaville Fest. And then this QR code, which took you to. The channel. Picture so, of me, perhaps. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so that's what we were given. Put that in there. So uh, we had that on the dash all day, and actually it did increase subscribers over the day. I did monitor it. Um, you know, gained 20 or so subscribers. So a nice little touch. And then it was time to look at the cars. Mm. And so there was, if you didn't go, I'll just explain it. There was two parking areas. There was Vandenplatz in which we were parked, which were the first 300 exhibits. I think they didn't know how many people were actually going to come to the show. And so they sold the first 300 spaces they'd got and said, actually, we need some more, please. And then they'd got another sort of 800 mm -hmm. spaces in the Mayfair parking. So we got parked. We were parked next to some other YouTubers, um, Tim and UK Barn Finds. And from there, it sort of, the day went. Was it fully, fully subscribed in the end? Yeah. Every ticket was sold? Absolutely. Every Fair play to them. Yeah. That's impressive, isn't it, for your first show? Yeah, exactly. It, it is. really is. It was the first show. Nobody had ever been to it before. No. So we rocked up and it was cold. Yeah. <laughs> it was windy because yep. it was eight o'clock in the morning. Um, and then we just sort of, decided to have a look round. Well, yeah, and we saw so much stuff. In fact, we've missed people who wanted to see us because we weren't based at the car, really. It, we bumped into people on the way round, though. There's two sorts of car shows, isn't mm. there? There are car shows such as the Rustival, which to me was all about the community, was all about people like myself and yourself and yourself who know these people, know the YouTubers, know the community. Weird Car Twitter, for example, I'm quite active on Twitter, and if you haven't got me on there, it's John Cooten, all one word. Um, it just felt different. It felt different to a sitting at your car yeah, getting with your, your picnic getting and Getting your, your dog. chair out the back and sitting out the back and then taking the ump when some silly beggar wants to come and talk to you about the car. And, and that, to me, is my favourite part about a car I show. I was at a car show and I went to ask this man, you know, and he was sort of... Bleh, 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 and his missus says, the bloke's asking you about your car, tell him about it. Yeah. You know? yeah. He just yeah. wanted to sit there and sit with his car, I think. Which is fine, I understand that. I, understand yeah. that but some... I was interested in his car, I think it's because it was a Hillman. <laughs> <laughs> it was an Avenger at that. I think some people at car shows just want to take their car there and enjoy the day. Fine, not a problem. And maybe some people suffer with social anxiety. I understand that as well. And maybe some people just don't want to speak to every bloke about or people about their car. But the Rustival was different. We could have quite easily sat by the car all day. Oh, yeah. And spoke to. And it wouldn't have rained as much as it is doing now. Everybody. No, <laughs> it just started raining. <laughs> Uh, is it going to pass this shower, or is it going to really it, be... Did you say pass? Pass. Oh. Maybe we should come back. See you later. Have you finished messing about with your motorbike now? I'm waiting for the f first chance of a dry day so I can put some miles on the old girl. Shall we film this rust of all chat? Yeah, excellent. Then we'll talk about motorbikes. We're ah. back then. <laughs> yeah, we're back. <laughs> After that shower. A passing well, shower. It was literally a passing shower. Or pissing, sort of I don't know which. 20 seconds later, it had gone. Um, anyway, where were we? Cameo appearance. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, where were we? We were sorry, uh, well, how impressed we were. That, that, no, that, car show. that's it. We turned up and we could have spent all day yeah. stood at the car talking to people. And yeah. we did speak to loads of people. So many of you guys came out and spoke quite rightly to the legend. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is... Uh, I've never had somebody want to have their photo taken with me. That's the modern equivalent of having your autograph, is it? Have you ever <laughs> selfie with them? How... Uh, you are, in my opinion, a humble man. You have not wanted to be in front of the camera all your no. life. You are a simple man. How, how did you find that? Well, it's just talking to ordinary people, isn't it? There's, you know, they're just ordinary people. They've got no, how do I put it, no agenda. They just want to be having a good day out like the rest of us and say hello. 
Oh, I'm sorry if I've missed anybody who wanted to see you. Is have a quick say hello. And that's it. Things I found from the forum is people saying, "Oh, we saw you and your dad, but I couldn't say hello because you were filming." Yeah. Um, so I'm, I apologise for that because if people wanted to have a chat with us, next time stop us and be like, "Because well, I can edit that out." If you can take anything from it, it's it's there is so many genuine nice people out there absolutely you know especially at car shows <laughs> yeah yeah who have who have watched the content who have watched yeah. the channel have watched but everybody at them car shows everybody was having a good time yep we've got a common interest yep you know if you walk past something and think i don't like that so what you yeah. don't like it you go yeah. look at the next blinking uh, car that uh, you like and that is genuinely what i think yeah. has resonated with people about the rust of all not only was the price point right let's talk about the price it was £11 each that got us into the car show, that got us access to the British Motor Museum mm. and the Jaguar and Daimler Heritage It was a bargain. Collection. £11 each. Uh, it cost us 30 quid in petrol. But when everything is so expensive nowadays, mm. when other car shows are £30, £40, I get it, it's a car, and I get you can pack as many people in your car, but if it's just you and the wife, or you and your husband, or you and your boyfriend, girlfriend, you and the inspector, 40 quid is quite expensive for a ticket out. So for 11 pounds each, considering an on the day price to the British Motor Museum is 19 pounds, it was an absolute no brainer that. So it's think, almost as though it's been subsidized by the government. Yeah. But it hasn't. <laughs> no, no government <laughs> subsidies available. Not for car shows. Not for car shows, but I think the price point resonated with people and, as you say, the fact that a lot of people that attended were of a like mind and yeah. were, it was inclusive. Uh, there was... I think it was the biggest collection of nice people you could put in one place at once. <laughs> exactly. And I think that's why a lot of people recognised me and you because they are from the same melting pot of people. That but classic car people are nice people. Yeah. yeah absolutely. It doesn't attract... No. Not nice people. There was the women's uh, social driving yeah. club there. There were representatives from the Young Retro Motor, Motor Club. There were representatives from the Gay Classic Car Club. I covered that young woman's burgundy Rover overalls because I haven't got any left. Yeah, there were <laughs> I don't think they'd have fitted me. <laughs> there, were, there were people there that openly on forums said they were suffering from social anxiety. Yeah. And there's people like ourselves who are, who are YouTube creators, but actually at heart are car people. This is a byproduct of my hobby. No, but I'm not a gregarious person. I don't go out of the way to meet new peoples and stuff. No. But they were people who had similar interests to us, weren't they? Yeah. So it's easy then, isn't it? Exactly. It's easy. And, and I think that's what it's all about as well, networking, isn't it? And meeting new people and meeting uh, new content creators and speaking to other people. There was a stage there, for example. Now, we didn't get to watch any of no, the stages. No, we were too busy inputs. looking at the stuff. There were people like Up and Down Vids. There was White Were they having q and A's? They were doing Q&As. Yeah. They were doing chats. Again, Becca from the Passenger Seat Podcast was talking about the Women's Social Drivers Club. Um, and it was just, in my opinion, a great event. Uh, and I'm only just recovering with my calves because we were on our feet all day. Um, let's talk about the Vandenpla parking, first and foremost. And that's the area that we were parked yes. in. It was full. It took us three hours, maybe, to get round that. Yeah. <laughs> and we didn't stop and go put things too long. Oh, no, we, we were, we we were stomping around, around, around because I was filming and a, and a full video of the show will be coming in the next few uh, days, weeks, months. Just need to take some time off work. <laughs> yeah, you need to take some time off work to get, I need to take some time off work to edit it. You need to take some time off work to go through it. Um, let's talk about the Vandenpla Park in there. Yep. There were so many cars in there that were immaculate. Oh, aye. There were so many cars in there that were daily drivers. Yeah. And there were so many cars in there that have just rocked up and were filthy. And actually, Ian from Hubnut came running past my car when I was cleaning it and shouted at me saying, you're not meant to clean the cars. For example, uh, a local chap, friend of mine, Simon, turned up in his two-seater open top. It was a standard, wasn't it? I've no idea what it was. He must have been brave. <laughs> <laughs> to yes, do that. it's like an oily rag restoration, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's wearing its Seats light. are wrapped. Yeah. It, it wasn't a perfect restoration, and, um, and it's an honest car. I don't think it's ever been restored. It's been kept going, hasn't it? Simon will take that to the shops locally and yeah. do his shopping. Uh, so there are people like that as well. 
I wouldn't want to take your Armstrong Siddeley to the shops. <laughs> oh, can you imagine backing it in a parking space at Asda? Yeah, you'd, oh. you'd struggle. Uh. There were quite a lot of Rover 75s at the Rustival. Oh, yeah. Um, in the Mayfair parking as well. And people that had an interest in Rover 75s that had their own came to say hello. Listen. Let's talk about some of the cars that we saw. So we obviously saw the Czech on a Trek Skoda. The, the boys that are raising money for Alzheimer's. Yep. They did doodle on a car. We saw uh, Ian Cook from Pop Bang Colour. He did some stuff there as well. What was your favourite car from that area? That, that, just the Vandenpla parking area. It was red. Mm. It's got to be that Jaguar then. It's definitely that Jaguar. What, what was, what was the special about it? I've got a soft spot it? for XJS's. So it was a Jaguar XJS? Yeah, but it was a TW. And it was a specially tuned car? Well, not, they didn't do much tuning. They put body kits on them and they usually change things like springs, suspension bushes and that to make them perform, handle a bit better. They stiffen the ride up on them as well usually. But you can get, it's like anything, you can get various sort of packs, can't you? But you were... Uh, I've got a soft spot for the XJ. You fell in love with that one. And I thought it was beautiful. I'd never seen anything like that before. I'd never heard of this tuning house. Um, my car of the Vandenpla area was a purple Fiat Panda until <laughs> I got right down the end. So we'd had some dinner, we'd spoke to lots of people and I saw something that I'd never seen before. And it wasn't an old car, it wasn't a modern car, it was a Japanese import. Oh, here we go. Um, <laughs> which fascinated me, which was a Honda S660, two-seater. I originally thought it was a Renault Wind from yeah. afar. It had that, like that, that shape at the back of a Renault Wind. I just fell in love with it. Uh, and then I saw the price of what it would be for me to buy one at 25 grand and then fell quickly out of love of it. Oh, it's cheaper than XJS. <laughs> but it was a beautiful little thing and that really surprised me because I'm into, I'm into my quirky classics, I'm into my unloved classics, I'm into my 90s square boxes and my 2000 curvy stuff. But for me to pick a, I think it was a 15 or 16 mm. plate Honda, import as my favourite car of that area of the parking shocked me, shocked me personally. So let's talk about the next part, which was dinner. <laughs> <laughs> we then had yeah. some dinner and actually dinner was difficult. Dinner was more of a working lunch, wasn't it? Because so many people came to, we, we weren't stood with the car as we discussed, so many people came to say hello and you were eating your dinner, you eating your big doorstop cheese sandwich, <laughs> and then people wanted to speak to you. I, I remember vividly closing the boot, nobody's there, opening the boot to get my dinner out, closing it again, there's about 20 people all stood around the car smiling, hello, waving, which was great, absolutely fantastic. I, I almost felt rude eating my dinner. Uh, I couldn't stop, I'd got it in. <laughs> but you had a special treat brought to you. I did, I did. A gentleman brought me, because he knows I like sardines, and he brought me some sardines all the way from Scotland. And his name was, his name was, his name wasn't, it's the same as that bloke from our classic car show. I think it's Alan. Alan Simpson. <laughs> Alan Simpson. And his mate, it. and I can't remember his mate's name, but there's both, he was an interesting man, he was into electric cars. It was Von something beard, I think. Von, Von Redbeard. Von Redbeard. Yes. So thanks to those two for coming to say hello. He was big into his electric cars, and we had a good chat about electric cars. Yeah, yeah. So we had some dinner. Yeah. Um, and then we went to the Mayfair parking area. And by the time we'd got there, it was about maybe three o'clock in the afternoon. A bit before, perhaps. A bit before. Yeah, we quite a few people had left. Starting to go, that yeah. Area, and um, that's not a problem. We got come and in, I think. Yeah, and enjoyed the show and, and, and got what, you know, what they wanted out of the show. So we didn't get to see absolutely everything in the but Mayfair parking just... area. Like a car park from the 1950s yeah. to the modern day. Something for everybody. Yeah. If you're into your Renault Kajars, if you have a Renault Kajar or you wanted to look round a Renault Kajar, you could do. Because someone had turned up in one. And who cares? Because the person that had brought that, that's their car that they wanted yeah. to arrive in and enjoy the show in. I was happy that I saw a Proton. Yes, two. there was a, some protons. <laughs> I got to see some protons. Yeah, definitely. Um, an M-Reg 
and... There weren't any jump books. No, no jump books. They are fast dying. Uh, and a J-Reg, I believe, Gavin Woods Proton 1.5. And I um, can't remember the gentleman's name now, but his uh, blue Proton mm -hmm. saloon that that I was offered a little while ago and turned down. I think if any protons have got to this age now, they're going to be around for a good while longer now, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. They've got this far, yeah. they've, they've got to go. And, hope, and, and it was good to see them in the hands of people that are genuine proton enthusiasts. That man and his son, they, they loved it, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't yeah, they? absolutely. His son would uh, would have been what eight, nine, yeah. ten years old, and son was so interested in preserving the history of that. And they proton. like driving around in it as they just them. use it. And they, they've made, got other vehicles, but that made me happy, uh, and that that, that was uh, so part it means of the it's a pleasure as well. to drive, doesn't it? Mm, absolutely. So there were so many cars in the uh, Mayfair parking area. Loads of Rover seventy fives in there. I got to see a Poseidon. Rover 75, which is the uh, monogram colour flip. Oh, all right. Um, I saw that. so many people. What was your favourite car of the, or favourite vehicle, I'm going to say, of the Mayfair parking area? It's got to be. This is difficult um, because there were so many. There were so, so many. I wouldn't be able to pick one, mate. I couldn't pick one. If I had to pick one to take it home, it would be the Talbot camper van. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was a Talbot camper van, uh, and there were some camp ret retro camper vans uh, that Steph from My Driver Classic has featured on her video. And I just think they're the sort of thing that I think I'd kind of like one of those. Just it's like the a, LDV vans. Not long ago, everybody was using them still. Find an LDV pilot van now. Well, this is it, but... Yeah, Royal Mail were using them. The yeah. police were using them. Yeah, everybody, everybody was, was using, using LDV them. Mate, I used to carry his motorbikes around in the back with it. And they've nearly all gone. They have now. Rust, yeah. rust has killed them. And then we went on to the uh, museum, which actually I thought was going to be my favourite part of the day. Heading to the museum as part of the rust of all, that would be a bonus. And. I'd never been to the British Motor Museum. You'd never been to the British Motor Museum. Our tickets, as I say, got us in. What did you reckon? Well, I was pleased to see something. It's that red Hunter GT, the Arrow Series Hunter, which had been done by the Bangers and Cash team. And it was, it was good. Yeah. With the Ross style wheels. Absolutely. Where it, were we? Isn't it good how you have to get dressed up for telly? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So then we went on to the British Motor Museum, which was my reason for attending the show, really. I thought, excellent, gets us into the museum. It's a good excuse to go meet some like-minded people and have a good look around the museum for a great price. And I'd never been to the Motor Museum. Have you been to the Motor Museum no, before? Mate, no, mate, um, no. We entered, we entered quite late in the day, maybe mm. three o'clock, four o'clock. What did you think? Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. A lot of really, really, really interesting stuff. In fact, there's more stuff than you can imagine. It, you need a day looking You do. It. And there is a video I on think the channel. That's it. We was a bit rushed. Yeah. I think I missed some stuff that I should have probably liked to see. And I was focusing on stomping around getting content yeah, for the channel. We, had to, we, had, we'd got, we was on a time scale, weren't we? Yeah. If you haven't seen the video on the channel, there is one of Dad and I walking around the Motor Museum. It's had quite a few views yeah. already. Um, <laughs> What are you doing behind the camera? Come and get in front of the camera. <laughs> Mother's in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Mum's saying something about taking photographs. We've got to do that again. Third time looking. So what was that? Was that a bit of more? That was a bit wise? of more and wise. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you were talking about the bangers and cash car. Yeah. Tell us about that. Well, it's from my era, isn't it? It's an Arrow Hunter GT. And I think it's the last one in the universe, I think, maybe. I don't really know. But it was very, very nice. And I've got a soft spot for them. I really have. I like the sort of roots group from the 70s. It's the youth, I suppose, isn't it? The main rotunda, the main British Motor Museum area because there was an overspill which in my opinion was the best oh, part well, of it. There was some interesting stuff in there. There was some early British Leyland stuff in there, there was some rare stuff in there and we'll come to that in a second. But the 
the main museum was fascinating. Everything was clean, everything was tidy, oh, yeah. everything, everything was in good condition. It was like a showroom, wasn't it? And spotless. The place was not dusty or no. anything. And I was shocked that you were able to get up close and personal mm. with the cars. They weren't behind barriers, apart from the DB5. You could get up close and personal with the cars. And actually, I did see a couple of people, rightly or wrongly, opening car doors, having oh, a look yeah. in, because everything was unlocked. Yeah, they asked you not to touch them. They do they? ask you not to touch them. There are some cars that you can sit in, like the, the old Rover and the old Austin and all that sort of stuff, and kids' area. But I suppose it's a working museum as well. I think all the cars probably fire up and run and they take out and probably uh, display for different events. Um, are you going to say that that Hillman was your favourite car from inside that part of the museum? Yeah, I think so. It's just because it's got a soft spot. I've got a soft spot for that sort of era. Uh, it's, I, it's strange. I worked in a British Leyland garage, but I was a soft spot for the Roots group. I really enjoyed seeing the prototype vehicles. I think the prototype mm. Vauxhall spaceship sort of thing was very mm. cool. Um, I can't really pick a favourite car from that area because I like the whole thing. It was good to see. It was good to see the fastest ZTT. Yes, so oh, I. And all the MG Rover Speedsters. I also liked seeing the really early stuff and to get up close with an Armstrong Sidley 346 Star Sapphire. I've got this urge to try and what it's like to drive one of those pre war open top cars. Was it the Triton? Or I don't know the thing with the big metal wheels? Do you oh, no, that? no, no, that was a, that, that's, that, no, a Trojan. Trojan, that's it. Yeah. Where even garages were saying, please, we do not accept Trojans. It was a two-stroke, we're chain drive. Really primitive. Yeah, primitive car, but it was done for cheapness. And that was good to see. Now, I wouldn't want to drive that. I'm sort of the sort of thing that uh, group captain would have driven around in, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Two-seater sport, open sports car. Open sports cars. They were great to see as well. I'd like to drive one of those. The one area we didn't get to check out in the main building was the cafe. No, no, we don't do food. <laughs> you have to keep yourself in shape when you're in, in the media's attention, of we'd, course. We'd, yeah, clearly. <laughs> we'd brought a packed lunch um, and we'd had that. And then uh, it must have been five o'clock. Yes, we went across the way. trucking out time. Yeah, we went across the way to the British Leyland collection the collection the overspill collection almost downstairs was the jaguar daimler heritage collection which was fascinating in its in its own right um but upstairs they'd got things such as the first mini metro hmm. metro prototypes all sorts of prototype vehicles the last rover 75 the first montego the last montego uh, tell me what the best machine <laughs> The 1275 GT that had been damaged and put in the tunnels, and it says most of the parts are missing. Did the thieving sadzu work there? Is that why the parts went missing? Or did they use them to repair cars that they were building? That was the Longbridge Tunnel Mini. Yeah. I don't really know do the you story think, about that. Do you, I think it had got squashed or something had got dropped on it. Okay. And they just put it in the tunnels. And just left it. But did the staff appropriate the parts for repairing stuff on the lines that they were short of? Or... Yeah, I'm going to take this and fix my 1275. <laughs> <laughs> Things we didn't get to see, which I was a little bit disappointed about, were the recent uh, MG Rover Longbridge prototypes hmm. that had been um, on display there and are currently being restored and worked on by the museum. They were in the back of the well, they've workshop. They've got apprentices, could, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could, see them, we could see them in the workshop uh, from a distance, but I didn't get a chance to have a good uh, look up close and personal to them. And then the Jaguar Daimler Heritage Centre. It was... Interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a Jaguar guy. I'm, I, there was a Daimler prototype mm. convertible, and that really tugged at my heartstrings because it was a beautiful blue, Wedgwood blue colour with cream leather interior. That was fantastic. <laughs> but there was an aluminium polished Jaguar, which yeah, was that stunning. Was, yeah, that and was, then obviously we got to see the that Austin Powers Jaguar. That was, wasn't it? it was special. And the Dine of the Day Jaguar. Yeah. And then the Jaguar seven prototype or i can't remember what it was which is like a modern jaguar but all in all the rust of all bloody good day 
I'm wondering how many other car shows will probably sort of be like that and just think, that was a good idea, look mm. how successful that was and how much people enjoyed it. You're thinking the blueprint from the Rustival well, it might be is a success of, and people are going to... It might... How do I put this? The Festival of the Unexceptional is very inclusive though, isn't it? The everything, you see everything there, don't you? The Festival of Unexceptional is a different beast. Yeah, probably. In, in my opinion. Yeah. And I'm sure now we've mentioned it, which I was trying not to do. Well, you can always edit it out. Yeah. <laughs> it will start a conversation. I think... Probably the, car shows might evolve a bit. Yes. I think a genus, a seed has been sown now with people. Hmm. And I'm still coming down off the high four days later of the Rustival. Hmm. I think the takeaway is we had a great time. Hmm. You had a great time. The, the, the title's misleading, isn't it? <laughs> because it wasn't, it's not just about cars that are rusty. You know, Rover 75s, yeah, there are some Rover 75s. If you want the rusty cars, you know, you've got the Rover 75. Or if you want the non-rusty cars, you've got your Roots Group. <laughs> <laughs> I think the car show landscape changed on Saturday the 9th. Mm, probably. And I think we'll see more shows like the Rustival. I think we'll see a bigger and better Rustival If you want to make year. you upset... Some of the 75s there was better than this one. Shh. <laughs> Let's not worry about that. Um, I had a great time. Did you have a good time? It was one of the best days out of the car show I've ever had. That's answered my next question then, which was, did you enjoy it? And would you go again? Definitely. Was yeah. it what you thought it was going to be? I didn't know what to expect. Really. No, me either. But I've been to your average run-of-the-mill car show, and sometimes you can think to yourself, that was a bit meh. Samey. <laughs> A um, bit meh. I've been to many car shows in my life, and as of 2023, I was a little bit car showed out. But don't car shows, they must have a radius, what people dare take, they're a classic. Yeah. But I, I'd got to a point last year where I was a bit like, I could take it or leave it, this car show. And you've probably noticed that I, wasn't, I haven't taken my cars to as many shows as I have no. done in the past 10 years. The Rustival has ignited something inside me now and has made me ready for the 2024 car show season. Will we take the Rover 75? Maybe. We're going to go to the Pride of Longbridge next. Again, I've never been to the Pride of Longbridge. Is that at Longbridge, by the way? Yeah, which yeah. it's in a field opposite Longbridge. Yeah. Um, so we're going to take the Rover 75. How many fields left in there? <laughs> we'll, we'll soon find out when we get there. If we can't get in, <laughs> we'll be... We'll Didn't be, know there's uh, fields at Longbridge. We'll be parked uh, next to it. But the Rustival, in my opinion, a great start to the car show, car enthusiast, car meet community. Bit of a genius idea, really, wasn't it? Of 2024. Wonder who come up with that. Who knows? Who knows? I suppose it was a seed between all, all four. Oh yeah, all the YouTube people. Let us know in the comments below. Did you attend the Rustival? What did you take? Have you watched videos? Send us the links to the videos. The, our video is coming. I am editing it slowly. Um, I want to just get it right because I don't want to just... Sort It'll of, be in time for next year's Rustival. Yeah, I don't want to dump five hours worth of Rustival on the channel and everyone get bored. Um, There's lots of Rustival videos on already. Yeah. Lots. <laughs> lots and lots. <laughs> lots and lots. Do we need another? Yeah. Shall we save it for later in the year? <laughs> <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, a little bit of an impromptu chat, a little bit of a review, a little bit of a sit down and talk about cars, let us know. I loved it. Yeah. That's all I've got to say Good about day the rest out, of mate. Good, Good day, day out. out. Yeah. Till next time, have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. Take care. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. If you've enjoyed this video, I've selected a few more specially for you on this page. Click either side to select them now. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button to always stay up to date with the channel.